Today was supposed to be the wedding day for this couple, but little did they know it would turn into a funeral. As the wedding ceremony progressed, suddenly, a group of people in biohazard suits stormed in, accompanied by police cars blaring their sirens. However, everyone at the wedding was immersed in the joy of the occasion, completely unaware of the impending disaster. Out of nowhere, a man fell from the second floor into the dance floor below, shocking everyone present. Some rushed to help, but to their horror, the man not only survived the fall but also turned into a zombie, attacking an elderly woman nearby. This horrifying scene left everyone stunned. But that was just the beginning. More zombies flooded in, causing panic and chaos as people scattered in all directions. The bride and groom got separated in the chaos. The groom, Caldo, had to take refuge in the kitchen, trying to keep the zombies at bay. With the situation quickly turning into a living hell, the immediate priority was to escape because the zombies would soon break through the doors. Caldo initially wanted to lead everyone to find another exit, but they discovered that even the kitchen staff had turned into zombies. They had no choice but to lock the zombies inside. As everyone felt helpless, the photographer noticed the sewer and thought it might be their way out. He immediately started dismantling it with a screwdriver he had on him. Meanwhile, the zombies continued to pound on the door. Danilo, in a moment of fear, tried to take the screwdriver from the photographer but ended up losing it. Fortunately, they could escape through the ventilation ducts, but the photographer was in a tough spot. The narrow passage was too tight for him to squeeze through. Now he understood the importance of losing weight, didn't he? With the zombies about to break in, the others had no choice but to leave. The last guy promised to come back for him, but the photographer remained silent, giving a thumbs up to express his gratitude, knowing his chances were slim. After a long crawl, they finally made it outside, only to find themselves in another perilous situation. Along the way, they spotted a police car. Caldo wanted to seek help, but to their surprise, there was a zombie inside the car, grabbing his tie. The guy with them swiftly grabbed a water pipe and rescued Caldo, while Danilo wielded a wrench and bashed the zombie repeatedly until it met its demise. Danilo then used the police car's radio to call for help, unaware that the cop in the driver's seat was turning into one of them. Poor Danilo, he had quite a bad day. Suddenly, the police car's alarm went off, attracting nearby zombies. The remaining survivors dashed away, through the woods and into a church, where they were rescued by the survivors inside. Once safe, Caldo's first question was about his bride, Clara. In the midst of the chaos, nobody had noticed her. Then, the church's broadcast came to life, revealing Clara's voice. She was alive, trapped in the broadcast room with a priest, and she was carrying Caldo's child. Upon hearing this, Caldo wasted no time. He glanced at the weapons nearby, a bold idea forming in his mind. Soon, Caldo set off with a teammate, unaware that Clara was in grave danger. Zombies broke through the room's door, forcing her to retreat to the innermost part of the studio. Surrounded by the horde, Clara realized she couldn't wait any longer. As an expecting mother, she summoned an unprecedented will to survive. The frightened priest stood frozen in place until Clara slapped him awake. Together, they used repelling gear to escape the studio, narrowly missing Caldo and the others who came to rescue them. They reached the second floor billiards room, where they encountered two other survivors. They formed a team to survive, but as they entered the corridor, they ran into a zombie head-on. Attempting to go the other way, they found themselves blocked by two more zombies. The zombies in the mirror appeared demonic, a domain the priest was familiar with. He urged the others to move ahead while he attempted to exorcise the zombies with a crucifix. One zombie grabbed him fiercely, but the incantation worked, freezing all the zombies in place. Escaping through the back door, they encountered a SpongeBob. Clara activated the power, while Rafa and SpongeBob attempted to open the door. Just as they cracked it open, Clara's friend fell victim to a zombie attack. Seeing no choice, Clara abandoned her friend. Meanwhile, as Caldo and his teammate entered, the zombies dragged the teammate away. Terrified, Caldo fled and returned to the studio, unaware that Clara and the priest had already left. In the background, the news of the virus outbreak continued to play. He anxiously watched the surveillance footage but couldn't spot Clara. Outside, heavy rain poured down, and the trio searched for a safe place. Suddenly, a mysterious figure appeared in the rain. Clara squinted and recognized her mother, now a zombie. Due to the blurred vision, Clara didn't realize it until the zombie lunged at her. Luckily, SpongeBob's reflexes were fast enough. He used his shotgun to take down the zombie. 
Witnessing her mother fall before her, Clara was overwhelmed with grief. But more zombies were drawn by the gunfire, forcing Clara to leave her mother behind. Due to SpongeBob's water-absorbent nature, he was too heavy and got overwhelmed by the zombies. The two fleeing survivors discovered a secret room along the way and took shelter inside. However, when they reached a crossroads, Clara hesitated, thinking about Caldo's safety. But Rafa, focused only on his own survival, cared little for Caldo's fate. In the midst of their indifference, a familiar melody echoed, it was the song Caldo had played in the banquet hall. Overjoyed, Clara realized he was alive. She then picked up a chainsaw and, with Rafa's help, cut off the obstructive dress. After a moment's hesitation, Rafa decided to follow Clara to the banquet hall. After all, who would refuse such a reassuring woman? Meanwhile, Caldo had returned to the kitchen, finding the photographer who hadn't managed to escape still sitting there, now with a meal in hand. As Caldo approached, the photographer collapsed, and behind him emerged a zombie. Startled, Caldo took a step back and quickly grabbed a nearby knife for defense. In the next moment, the zombie lunged, impaling itself on the blade. Seizing the opportunity, Caldo picked up a meat grinder and brutally dispatched the zombie. Just as he was about to leave, he realized that the area outside was swarming with zombies. After a brief detour, he found himself trapped in the kitchen again. Simultaneously, the duo in the secret passage encountered zombies. Reacting swiftly, Rafa decided to escape, while Clara opted for a head-on confrontation. Armed with a chainsaw, Clara swiftly dealt with the zombies. However, when she turned around, she discovered Rafa had been bitten. Seeing his imminent transformation, Clara reluctantly put him down. With more zombies closing in, a fatigued Clara had no choice but to flee. Back in the kitchen, Caldo heard something and, upon investigation, discovered Clara passing by the secret passage. Clara also heard Caldo's call, and at this critical moment, the long-separated couple finally reunited. Clara hastily lowered the ladder, climbed up, and grabbed Caldo's hand. However, the reunion was cut short as the outside zombies became agitated for some unknown reason. Caldo, remembering the screwdriver dropped by the photographer earlier, urged Clara to find it. After a frantic search, Clara successfully located the screwdriver. Yet, as she handed it to Caldo, the pursuing zombies caught up. One zombie even managed to grab Clara's leg. In a nail-biting moment, Caldo opened the iron gate just in time. The two embraced tightly. But their joy was short-lived as zombies broke through the door. Caldo thought of escaping through the ventilation ducts, only to find zombies inside them as well. They were now in dire straits, resigned to facing death together. However, just then, the radio broadcast suddenly sounded, causing the zombies to halt in their tracks. It turned out the priest was still alive and reciting a spell in the broadcasting room. Seizing the opportunity, the couple fled the kitchen as the zombies froze in place. They made their way through the banquet hall and finally reached the outside. Any zombie that heard the spell remained motionless. Just when they thought they were safe to leave, a zombie lunged out and bit Clara. It was then that Caldo realized the zombie was actually Clara's deaf grandfather and was unaffected by the spell. Seeing Clara's wound, she proposed a daring idea, she asked Caldo to cut off her bitten arm, hoping to prevent her from turning. Without hesitation for Clara's safety, Caldo raised his sword and made the painful decision. Clara nearly lost consciousness from the excruciating pain, but Caldo quickly bandaged her wound and wrapped her in his coat, supporting her as they left. However, upon reaching the doorway, they found the entire building sealed off by quarantine personnel. Clara started coughing up blood, indicating that the virus had not been stopped. Seeing Clara beginning to mutate, Caldo made a selfless decision. He embraced Clara and walked into the safe passage. Willingly infecting himself with the zombie virus. Soon, both of them mutated, and they collapsed under the soldiers' guns. In their final moments, they regained consciousness, their hands clasped together, their love enduring till the end.